Hi friends, it's time for our second read aloud of Harold and the Purple Crayon. All right, friends, so this is our second read aloud of Harold and the Purple Crayon. And you may remember that Harold uses his purple crayon to create adventures. Where did Harold's imagination and purple crayon take him? What happened at the end of the story? Let's read and find out. But before we start reading, I want to go over the vocabulary again so you can see the words. So, we have frightening, which means, um, you know, you're scared. It's, it's very scary. You know, Halloween is coming up and frightening is a word that people use because they're like, oh, I'm frightened. I'm frightened. That means they're scared. Okay. And then deserving. So someone that deserves something is somebody that has earned something um, through good behavior. Um, a lot of times you'll see people earn an award or whatever, and they deserve that because they had some kind of good behavior, whether it be um, doing something good or, you know, working really hard at something or just being a kind person or things like that. So someone that deserves something, did something special, did something kind. Then we have wits. Remember it talked about he was falling and he kept his wits about him. That means he kept his smart thoughts. So, um, you know, you kept your wits about you. That means you were able to still in the midst of um, something very scary, falling, through the sky, um, able to keep your brain thinking smart. So that's that's your wits. And then assure, next to the last word here, assure. Um, that means that he came out of the boat or off the water onto land. Um, when you come ashore, that means you come off the water onto the land. So it could be a beach, um, something like that. And then our last word is porcupine. And I hope everybody knows what a porcupine is. It's an animal that has sharp quills on it, um, similar to a hedgehog. Um, the porcupine's quills are a lot longer and they can actually throw them at their predators or their enemies. So those are our words today. Frightening, deserving, wits, ashore, and porcupine. So let's get started on our story, Harold and the Purple Crayon. And remember, this story has been around for over 60 years. And to see if I actually tells. 1955 was when this was first copyrighted. So it's been around a long time. It's been over, over 50 years, or 60 years rather. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, and he needed something to walk on. He made a straight, long line. He made a long, straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he 
left the path for a shortcut across the field, and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. I think Harold wants to make sure the dragon keeps people from taking the apples until they are red. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly, he realized what was happening. But by then, Harold was over his head in an ocean. He came up thinking fast. And in no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he sailed enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stopped, he stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pies that Harold liked best. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. How can you tell the moose is hungry? Hmm. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold, Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make a hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he thought he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked over the side, he slipped and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily, he kept his wits about him and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. Phew, glad he was safe. He made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows were his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. Poor Harold. He decided to ask a policeman. What did the policeman do? Yeah. 
The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room in his bed. And suddenly Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. Then Harold made his bed. He got in it and drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. <laughs> so when Harold's boat landed on the beach, I noticed that Harold drew an anchor. I'll show you. Harold drew an anchor right here. This thing's an anchor. What would have happened had Harold not drawn an anchor? Yeah, his boat would have floated away because an anchor holds something still. It holds it in one place. When Harold gets scared of the dragon and his purple crayon shakes, what does it become? Do you remember? What does it become? Yeah, it becomes the ocean that he then needs a boat for, doesn't he? Doesn't it? Harold shares his pies with a hungry moose and a deserving porcupine. I wonder why Harold thinks the porcupine is deserving of the pies. What do you think the moose and the porcupine thought of Harold sharing his pies? Yeah, I'm sure they thought he was very nice, don't you? Even after drawing a city of buildings with windows, He drew an entire city of windows. Harold still couldn't find his bedroom window. How did he finally find his way back home? The moon. Yes, sometimes the sun and the moon help to guide us, especially um, when you become oriented with the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west so you know that any way forward is north and any way um, backward is south so that kind of gives you a direction and the moon can be a guiding light sometimes so it was the moon that helped him to find his way back home so I hope you enjoyed this second reading of Harold and the Purple Crayon. Join me. Um, it will probably be easy tomorrow's Friday. It'll probably be Monday before we have our last reading where you get to help me read the story. So stay tuned for that. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the videos. Um, hit the bell icon for notifications of all videos, and thank you so much for watching.